Hi everyone and welcome to module six roundup decision trees and ensemble. There are lots of implementation of decision trees and in this course we focus on the popular methods, the cart, classification and regression trees and the random forest. And they're both by Brayman who was a professor at UC Berkeley. Okay, well, so that's the menu for today. So let's start off with characteristics of decision trees. And for this, we'll build on the spreadsheet I started to prepare last week and Pierre kindly uploaded this to Google. All right, so trees. So speed wise, it's considered good compared to some other methods such as uh, neural nets. I say that with a pause because when you say a method is fast, slow or good compared to, or poor compared to other methods, but that's rather vague. So in the industry, they talk about complexity or computational complexity, then they can put a, some kind of measurement on that so you can see how fast it is compared to some other methods. But if we're doing it as a layman's terms, we can just say, okay, it's fast compared to some other methods such as something else. Uh, in this case, I give you an example like a neural nets, which you'll see next week. Interpretability, it, trees have advantage of that they're interpretable. So you can follow, in other words, you can follow the path down the branches to see how you reached a prediction. Predictive accuracy, well, it's well recognized that trees compared to other machine learning methods are poor predictions. And why is this? Well, I'm talking here about the straight, the basic tree. So the basic tree tends to overfit and so therefore it does not generalize well to other data. Now, just to get you thinking about trees, suppose I got like a 10 data points, then what's the maximum number of terminal nodes or leaves that I can have at the end? 10, right? So in that case, you, you, you could have a tree that gives you a perfect fit because each observation will have its own leaf at the end. But that would be overfitting. Uh, and that's why we have some ways to get around that. Okay, which we'll discuss later. Dealing with irrelevant features, that's a tick there, because the trees will just ignore irrelevant features over the splits. Natural handling of mixed and continuous features, a tick there. Yes, it does. Uh, you've seen in the examples this week where you can have, uh, you can partition it by continuous predictors, but you can also partition it by uh, categorical features. Is uh, normalization or scaling required? No. So that's less effort there. Is it robust to outliers in the input space? So here I'm talking about your predictor space as opposed to your output, uh, your response value. Uh, well, yes, it is. Uh, it depends a bit on the loss function, but it's considered, yes, it is robust. Robust means not really affected by. Missing values, well, we don't go into it in this course, but the trees have a nice feature also that they can deal with missing data. So you don't have to think about that when you run a tree. You see here then I've put many ticks against the tree. And that's a, a thing about the tree is you should know that it has many desirable properties. Of course, the key feature is that, that that is very important to us is predictive accuracy. And for that, it does not do so well, but we can always get around that by
combining them by using some other method. Here we're using some uh, general method called ensemble, where we combine a lot of trees to get a better prediction. And boosting and bagging are two ensemble methods. At the outset, it's important to say that you can't just say one is better than the other. So then the question is, when does one do better than the other? Okay, well, I'm not telling you how backing and boosting works. That's in the, that's in the course material. I'll just tell you when one is better than the other. So the bagging method works by, re can I, I just re need to just go back on that. I got you to, let's start again. When, how do you assess a prediction? We can assess it by the mean square error. We can assess the mean square error and the mean square error breaks down into a bias squared plus the variance plus some irreducible error. Now, bagging reduces variance. Whereas boosting is good at reducing the bias. So if you have a method which has high variance, but low bias, such as some method that has given you overfitted model, then you'd expect bagging to be better. So if we think about the straight, the basic tree, that is tends to be overfitted. It's overfitted, it has high variance. So you'd expect bagging to be better in that case. All right, hyperparameter tuning for random forest. Uh, I put this in because reading the discussion forums, many of you noticed, yeah, if you kind of do different settings for the random forest, you can get different answers. So this, and it's common to some of these machine, some machine learning have more kind of settings than others or hyperparameters. So for the set, for the hyperparameters settings for the random forest, you've got, I've listed here five. So a number of trees for forest, this, 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 okay. So how to tune? Well, this is it. So when you are doing some things like Kaggle competitions, there's always discussion about, oh, how do you tune it? You know, do you do it by trial and error? Or is there kind of a rule? Well, academic papers tend to try to find rules for certain situations, but given the real data, you really have to do some kind of clever trial and error method. So one method is this, you form a grid of hyperparameter settings then you sample values, comb combos of settings from the grid and perform cross-validation. Then you choose the setting that gives you the smallest cross-validation error. So I'll give you an example. Suppose you have, instead of five settings, suppose you have two hyperparameters. Then you can imagine you have a, literally a box. Split that box into uh, a big box into small boxes. So each of those uh, intersections of the boxes will be a coordinate and those coordinates then you feed through each one you feed through to perform cross validation. Um, yeah. Why do we need so many machine learning tools? I picked up on this because last week there was a discussion about the EEG data. Someone said that the uh, SVM was better. Okay, so let me, this is a good discussion. Yeah. Why some methods are better than others for the given data? For this, I want to look at the example from your text, the ISLR text, page 315. 
okay, let's consider this top, the, these two first. So imagine a situation where we have two features and they're both continuous. So let's just look at this one here. That's a continuous feature. I don't know, it could be weight and this one could be height or something, right? It's both continuous. And then you have two classes. So this is a classification problem. We're just supposing they're two classes. So uh, here he's just, they've just used two different colors. You can just imagine some dot, dot, dot data dots here, like yellow data dots here. And up here, concentrated green data dots. So he's just showing you that this is one class, that's another class. Well, if your data looks like this, then you can see this line here would be a good separation of the two. So if you are above the line, you will be classified as this green class. Below the line, you'd be classified as the yellow one. Now that straight line would be a good classification, but how about still given the same scenario of these green and yellows, how about if we split it up like this, vertical and horizontal lines? This would not be a good split because you can see there are some cases where it's not so clean. For example, in this box here, there's so much green in the yellow here, they've got green and the, sorry, green and the yellow, yeah. See, so it's less pure. Now, in this case, if I ask you which classification is better, you would say this one, because this one has zero error, this one has errors. So what would give us a separation like this, a clean separation like this? Logistic regression, because logistic regression gives us linear uh, decision boundaries. How, what does this here, uh, these vertical and horizontal lines um, correspond to? They correspond to decision boundaries created by trees. So trees, splits up your feature space in terms of right angle lines, rather like, rather like you might be thinking about to some, I can grab this, sorry, this picture, this guy here. So you might recognize this, Mondrian. So you split it into boxes. And that's what trees, uh, the tree method does. So in this case, if your features looks like this, two classes like this, uh, trees would not work as well. All right. Now, case two. Now suppose we have blocks like this in your feature space, again, x1, x2. This time, it looks, you, you've got a block here of one group and another of the other one. But in this case, logistic regression here, or some method that gives us a linear decision boundary, does not perform as well as a tree. So a tree here, we have a perfect split of the two groups. Here we do not. Here you've got a mix of one group here and some other group there. And likewise for this one you've got. So they're mixed, so they're less. Uh, yeah, so they're, 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 you're going to have errors if you use this method as opposed to this one, bigger errors. So the, so the take hope message is the method that works really depends on your feature space. Now, I've shown you an example here. We'll talk through an example where you have two features. So it's easy, you can actually draw and I can show you graphically what it looks like. But of course, in practice, we've got many, many features. Many, like uh, thousands, even hundreds, thousands, that kind of order. And so you can't actually picture it. So we cannot draw these kind of boxes to see which method would work better. And hence that we have to kind of do, uh, try different kind of machine learning methods that work, that are applicable, and then just see which is the best. Uh, maybe uh, combine it with using some ensemble to 
get a, 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 a better a better more um, better predicting predicting model. Okay, so that's it. Um, so if you like to continue discussion, do post in the forum, uh, and I'll see you next week.